So yeah, I played this I played this game when it came out back in 2013. So this is apparently like a I, I want to say it's a re-release and stuff. So is everyone streaming it right now? I guess so. I, I don't think there's actually I kind of looked and there wasn't so many people. I mean it's a brand new game. So there's gonna be a lot of people streaming it, but I was I was kind of interested in I liked it a lot. I never well, obviously it's not the kind of game you just replay, you just kind of enjoy it and the quit and the kind of the quippy humor. So um Kind of the whole deal with it is, um, it's like, uh, it's, so there's a re-release for the console, but they decided to, okay, so they were, they were like, it's not, it wasn't on the consoles, they never released it there. Uh, so I think they wanted to make a console release of it, uh, but they also wanted to change it up a bit so they can re-release it on the PC, I guess, a little bit. So not just do a straight up port, because then it's not like a brand new thing. So it's like a so so-called reimagining of it, so... I guess we'll see. I, I really did like it when I when when we originally played it. So, yeah, I played it before. Uh, I can see that just fine. Which is the current time? What time is it? All right. Well, it's uh, I gotta go all the way up. It's three twenty-two. Oh, like why can't it just determine from my computer what the time is? Okay. I appreciate you played the demo back in the day. It was it the demo? I, I I played the full game. I I, I like this too. So, it was a great uh, great game. Simplified controls. Oh no! Nah, How's it simplified? It's all like well, I guess it would basically, yeah. It's like barely anything you can do. That's how it goes. You know, many people played the demo in addition to the full game. They had no idea it was an entirely different experience. All right, yeah. You know what? I don't remember that. <laughs> I'll be honest, but I think I did do that. Uh, but we'll see. I, I I don't fully remember, but it was it was I don't know, it was pretty cool. All right, let's give it a shot. All very familiar. I mean, I don't remember this most of the stuff. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number four two seven. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Just want to change something. Um, all right. I hate Mondays. Uh, you can't. You cannot pick it up. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. <laughs> Whenever I press E, it's just typing on the keyboard. Username access. It's a little bit cut off in the in the in the thing over there. Dude, everyone hates Mondays here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So, so should we do the true ending, or well, actually, I guess the good ending first. Yeah, we could, we could, we could follow along. I'm, I'm good with that. All 
not allowed in all any of these rooms. So it's like, it, it is definitely a little bit different. You can kind of you can kind of get that feeling for sure. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> all all very true uh, uh, all very true arguments. Graph things about money. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. <laughs> I, I I think I think whoever was <laughs> is unique you most of all. I think for sure uh, oh shit, we gotta go in the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. I remember this having a long uh, dialogue to it. There was a couple things I did miss, like when I originally played it. There was nothing here, no choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Ah, eh, we're gonna stay. <laughs> the broom closet ending is it the best one. Baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there, doing sweet F.A. <laughs> On the sweet broom closet ending. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here, I'm... I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> I think they had it revoice everything, too. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Joke's on you, I don't have friends. I'm hoping that they actually did a broom closet ending. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. <laughs> also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> I wonder if the console version of this actually uh, talks about how they're like dead at the, the TV or something. That's <laughs> yeah, not going to do anything else. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> I'm going back in. You too? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. <laughs> All right. The one who made this game is brilliant. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. There's a lot of Coming good ones here. Staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Got 
Gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, there's like no reflection. Money in the morning. Yeah, this is def this is definitely his name was Monday. Extreme bathrooms. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. What happens if you went down instead of going up? Well, we'll try that at one point. It's not a very long game if you just fit, listen to what it says. So we're just trying our first run through it, just to do like uh, what the what the actual story does and see how Descending it's changed. Descending into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. I don't actually remember too much about the. Uh original game, so, you know. Um. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. So like I said, I'm still just trying to follow the main path. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life. Fired. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. I mean, that's any job. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? All right, it's a little thing up here. No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Oh, Stanley's number? I don't remember. You can see it on the office the next time we have a pass. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Guess he can't disable the console. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Well, that's it for the Let's Play now. That's like the shortest possible thing. So what, what was this like? 
Dude, 18 minutes? I, well, I, it didn't take me actually 18 Blackness minutes. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. All right, so that is the only time we're listening to the narrator all the way through. <laughs> achievement unlocked, get your first achievement. Achievement unlocked, beat the game. So we're, we're 427, by the way. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. <laughs> it just restarted. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, <laughs> now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. 
Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, by the way, it just does the uh, the same thing. Uh, is it? Uh, do I have to restart it myself? I think I have to restart it myself. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I th I, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah, uh, here we go. Input. So if you've never played this game before, just little things start changing uh, the more you play it, and you can also, like, diverge of paths and things like that. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. There's a couple of endings I know I missed Yet the first time I played this. there's not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think it's this one. I don't know. It's th this one is the one where we want to come back out. Stepping oh, into his manager's good. office, Stanley <laughs> was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings. Desperate, Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. They have things for everything, it's great. <laughs> Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. <laughs> Actually, is this thing down here? I haven't, I haven't gotten too many changes yet, I haven't noticed. Especially if the, the linear storyline is still the same. So a lot of the gags are still uh, exactly as they were before. Can I basically go up again? Whoops. Nope. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. <laughs> Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. <laughs> okay, that's that's a new one. I don't think I've seen that one before. Let's just try going back through. Go up and down? Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. I'm pretty sure there's a new one. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens if I tap the code again. It said it was invalid. Oh, yeah. Did I not leave? Uh, 2854. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. I think I got it wrong. 28. I thought it was 45. No, no, no. 45? Yeah, I thought I did that the first time. Yeah, it's, it's just everything. It's always incorrect. So... Ah, I guess there's nothing else here. That was four or five? Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought. Anyways, I, I, I did enter it right, so... I guess we'll go back and up and down. We'll see if it makes a difference. Incredible. 
Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? <laughs> Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. <laughs> Was this in the original one? I don't, I don't remember ever doing this. So basically, do you really like loading screens? I'm going to see if it's stepping into... Oh, it's, is it more like different now or no? Oh my god. It's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. <laughs> All right, I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was pretty good. We're gonna do it again. Of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. <laughs> I like the little soundbite that happened when I entered the room. <laughs> well, this time he didn't say anything. Hmm. Uh. You know what? I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice? and slow. <laughs> there we go. Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises, to have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal? This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now, this is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years, and it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. 
so that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh, oh shit. Good, we're here. So can I, like, change my mind and go down? No. Nope. <laughs> okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Now we did <laughs> with the pyramids. The guy who went to Mars, world, world's healthiest human being. Yeah, there's a new path now. The, the button was disabled. I had to. I had to try it. <laughs> world peace, baby. Ah, yes. Here it is, just through this door. <laughs> Stanley tonight on stage. World's first sentient machine. Oh no. If only you could save this moment. Ah, uh, no, there's no saving to be done. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't <laughs> worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Or okay. too soon. It looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. Where he came from. Up and down again. <laughs> a book called Up and Down Again. Oh man, the storyteller. What's all those things? Break a leg, champ, your boss. Stanley, my true love for you my, grows by every day. You make me feel alive from your wife from the apartment and dig. <laughs> we tell stories the way you do. Go get them, tiger. I love the way you write, ride elevators. <laughs> Story. Stanley, me, me, dad. <laughs> Thanks for showing me that cool skateboard trick in the parking lot. You're too cool. <laughs> That's great. My my boss sent two two little notes there. Is this a sequel to Stanley Parable? No, it's like a it's like a remake of it. Uh, well, sort of remake. Uh, but there's like they just added more endings and some other stuff. So the dude that came down, came up with pizza. Guy went to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I'm a little shy. Oh, you can't go back. <laughs> oh, that's it for that one. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. <laughs> you love the broom closet ending? Oh, dude, new content. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? Dude, how can you go get wrong with new content? Just Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. <laughs> Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. I can't just go into it again. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? 
What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, here we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. I like how someone was asking what this was, and it was just all explained right away. Mm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if, um, oh, okay, let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. <laughs> the jump circle. All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. Go back down. There's no buns on that elevator. I mean, <laughs> we could skip it if we want to, but we gotta do it all the way. You can't just hold it down. You have to press it. <laughs> That's all the jumping we get to do. <laughs> New content to jump. Right, let me check it to see if we can go back down. It's <laughs> more content. Nope doesn't go back down I tried to jump again it actually it actually cuts out like it cuts you off man you can't it, I, I even got an achievement saying I, I can't jump in this game and I just did <laughs> well, that's it there's no worry you're only allowed to jump 36 times in the circle is is that it surely that's not all the new content there has to be something else right ah oh. on a bunny hop you saw your jumps how bold. Oh. So that opened. I, I heard something. I, I think it was this one that opened. Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. So say, Crouch, thank you for enjoying the new content. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, <laughs> please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? <laughs> oh, they reset it for me. Oh. Definitely new content. Psst! Stanley! Come over here! In the vent! I want to show you something! What's up here, though? Fine, let's go to the vent. Ah, oh, you could have gone the other way. Dang it, now I have to go back there. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. <laughs> I call it the memory zone. 
It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was solid with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. <laughs> He's got his awards here. <laughs> Awarded to Stanley Parable. <laughs> it's the last of us. Because <laughs> they didn't win. <laughs> These are pretty great. Is that actually the time? No. Because it asked me for the time at the beginning. Oh, postcards too. It was Skyrim all along. <laughs> Trip down memory lane. Bits of music from the Stanley Parable. Ah, the first dollar the game earned. You can play the game within the game. Any achievable, it's impossible to get this achievement. Go outside, don't play this game for five years. I actually have that one, I think. <laughs> I literally didn't play for five years. New video game releasing today. Stanley Parable deals with tough choices. Little Stanley? Oh no! A little rat. Or a hamster or some shit. <laughs> do, do you see that the Ultra Deluxe has a new version of the Go Outside achievement? I actually haven't looked at all the achievements. I'll, I'll look at them, I'm sure, at some point. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. <laughs> I feel like they're taking shots at Mass Effect there. Nostalgic, it was good. Oh, down here. Memory zone maintenance. Matt, <laughs> I, 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 the singing got interrupted. Unfortunately, I, I wonder if I had stayed there if it would have if it would have been there forever. Oh, there's the the development, different buttons. It's all nostalgia. <laughs> Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. The serious room. Ah, yes. I know how to get there, though. I didn't get there last time. Oh... <sighs> These were simpler times, Stanley, but I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? <laughs> oh no, oh god no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. 
I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? <laughs> this is gonna be great. <laughs> oh, shit. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. <laughs> Keep wanting to go kind of on the outside. Oh, more down, more, 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 more negative reviews. Does that guy know? I actually want to look him up, actually, but I don't know. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. There's a good review over there. He's just he's just remembering all the negative ones. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. <laughs> like a little plank. <laughs> it's a skip button. Oh, come on, man. how's there nothing back here? And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people, and if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 We've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left <laughs> until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say, the story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 oh, blah. Oh, I think it actually does repeat. We've eaten too much and it can't be just... Oh, yes, it's going through, until it's going through different ones. <laughs> but the logic of elimination working backwards... I think I actually literally have to skip it. ...becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It 
can't be. It's the yeah, because I've re 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 okay. I'll how many do it. billions left until so much more than forever I mean, ago? How much should I wait, guys? I say <laughs> the story and the All choices. Right. Or what <laughs> oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver oh, a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made in fact make you more not this kind of person and in fact do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first, I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that <laughs> Manifesto just has a much grander sort of supposed tone? To press it, it has again. a mouthfeel. It is rich with ambition he's, and history. Because he's, he's going on and on. History, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to Manifesto. <laughs> it's repeating. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look. I have a method for exactly this sort of situation. And I do find myself in this situation frequently. I'm going to say each word back and forth in repeated succession until I become sick of one or the other, in which case the word I am not sick of shall be the victor. It is an unimpeachable strategy, Stanley. It's rescued me from disaster in countless situations. All right, here we go. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. <laughs> it's repeating it. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise. I, I think it's just gonna, just gonna loop, by the way. Manifesto. Certified treatise. Treatise. <laughs> manifesto. Treatise. I think, I think we're supposed treatise. to press it. Right. Treatise. Manifesto. <laughs> well, there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I so can't I wait to see what them. Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial, something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity <laughs> rises the phoenix of quality. Every How time. else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved they did just video to fuck game with this properties person. of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the <laughs> annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted, offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. 
you may change, and you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just a uh, repeat either of you. To have had such an experience. <laughs> okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time uh, the button has been skipping through is door. becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. <laughs> I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just... Wait, how do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort, or a window or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall. I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? Oh, uh, it's still. I swear there was. <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh, my God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea who they are. What would it ever really matter? But here I am. I'm fixating on every tiny negative. Oh, Stanley, you're uh. back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week. <laughs> the point died. Or two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every branching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Dude. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months, <laughs> I lost it all in a blur. <laughs> Just keep skipping. Oh, he's gone. 
I'm gonna say Cookie Nine got fucking dunked on. <laughs> oh, you just fucking left me. Beep beep. <laughs> Skip button, man. Oh, dude, the clock even fell down. I keep wondering if there's something gonna be behind here. Oh, <laughs> they're actually uh <laughs> sending messages to to cook it up. Cookie died. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make <laughs> all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much. They said, first, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. <laughs> it's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world as though there were no consequences for a lack <laughs> just you can't make it <laughs> dude cookie nine got dunked on that's all i'm gonna say it's like nothing different here i think and just keep pressing it the end is never 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 the end so we can't stay here forever the taste story. I keep wondering if something's gonna change behind the wall. Cause why else have the wall if it's not to hide something from me, and hope I look at it? Oh shit! Well, there you go. <laughs> the gate like this before? I don't know. Clock fall off the previous one? Yeah, I, I noticed that one. Well, I fell off a bit ago. Hey, it's sunny now. Can't quite get out yet, though. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, it's dead now. <laughs> Just keep going forward in time. It's all spoopy now. How much time increases per push? I don't know. We're trying to we're trying to get oh. I just realized we're on a little bit of a tilt here. What happened now? <laughs> now we need the button. <laughs> it's just that it's just uh turned into fucking earth turned into Karak apparently. Oh no! I think we're I think we're done. The button is dead. I guess we're not allowed up here. <laughs> Basically, don't trust the the skip button. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> new, new content. Well, how can we refuse that? Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, the Stanley Parable 2. The end is never the end again. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a <laughs> measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. <laughs> Like all the posters. Taste the sequel. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future oriented, it screams progress and innovation and long term franchising potential. New content is that. New new content part two is in. Old and busted, new hotness. A cool red section of chart. <laughs> like it's been taking jabs at the gaming industry with all their two releases. No, it's it, honestly, Stanley Parable always took a couple shots at uh, the modern gaming industry. It's great. It's even on like a, a MacBook or something. TSP logo, logo like TS. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. <laughs> Sequels that are good. Portal 2, Half-Life 2, Dark Souls 2, Doom 2, Divinity Original Sin 2. Let's wait to the... Oh, we can't go over there. <laughs> Valued investors. New features. Ooh. There's new content. I want to go on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the new content could be anything. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Reassurance bucket. The merch. Oh, shit. This t shirt is the best new feature. <laughs> I saw the new content. Bun says the name of the game that the player is playing. That's new. <laughs> name, here's yours today. Here's your name in the game. All right. All right, let's see it. Let's, let's hear it. the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. 
Just play along. I promise you'll love it. OK, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. I am not Jim. Jim Lat. Jim Lat is your favorite creator. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see, what a thrill, what a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again. Do it again. Jim. Ooh. It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. <laughs> Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Jim. Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. I'm putting the gym button away. Jim. Otherwise, Jim. soon you'll start Jim. to lose all Jim. sense of who Jim. you actually Jim. are. Jim. Jim. <laughs> Jim <laughs> uh, J J <laughs> Jack Witchell got called out. I, I was kind of hoping you'd try to do some pronunciation of your username or something. I was, I was kind of looking forward to that. You heard Jim in the game? I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Epilogue. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. <laughs> I haven't quite finished down there, though. I want, I want to see the reassurance bucket. Dude, new, free new easy achievement? Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to the re reassurance bucket. No screenshots. Uh, what if I screenshot? Nope, doesn't do, doesn't do a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm allowed to screenshot as much as I want. They don't they don't detect that. Why is it like making a noise? Baby's all grown up. <laughs> the new updated ray traced more of the same, but in a good way. New features, new content, new ideas. Consistent quality, just uh, with the right amount of change. Schween Shaders. The name of the... Uh, oh, so there's a jump circle and an infinite hole. Well, we've already done the jump circle. <laughs> let's go Let's go to the reassurance bucket. Yeah, that, that's what I did. I pressed F12. That was the Steam one. The complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical. That it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well... I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. <laughs> We're just going to keep the bucket with us. 
does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. This is... Uh, office decorations? Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? Happy <laughs> 12th Birthday, Stephanie's. Or Get Well Someday. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step-niece it is. <laughs> ah, <laughs> they're all changed now. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No, no, I've made my decision, we're moving on. Come now, you've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly, but we all have to move on from our mistakes. The blue down here. Ah, it flickered. I mean, something's gonna happen. Does it change? Come on. Let's get, the, let's get the free, new, and easy achievement. I can't believe it's that simple. <laughs> Just pull a lever, receive your new achievement, no more steps, it just works. <laughs> now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Test achievement unachieved. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. <laughs> oh, come on. I thank God I have the bucket. I need just reassurance. <laughs> Hold? I guess I could try that. Nope. <laughs> guess, guess we're not getting the test achievement. <laughs> it just works. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Oh, the jump circle. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. <laughs> you spent the jumps. I guess you get the bat I pick up the back if you didn't use them all. Yeah, we weren't missing anything here. Well, I haven't gone to the top floor, but I'll go back there soon. I did, it's like like spinning there. So let's see, we are here. Settings world champion. Where's that at? So oh, it's just on oh that's the uh that's the other thing there. I I, I already went through that. Uh, let's see, infinite hole. Where is it at? Let's see. Oh, that's like, uh, I think that's over here somewhere. <laughs> Jumps. Uh, that's the exit, nah. Wait, where's the infinite hole? Can you find them? Can you find them? Collect them all. What is this? Ah, collectibles. 
Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Can I just keep going forward? I guess I can. <laughs> oh, there's a figurine there. I <laughs> got the bucket too. <laughs> Just, you found it. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Oh, nah. I'm gonna guess we have to find them somewhere in the game. Oh, yeah, we've done that one. Alright, the infinite hole. Infinite hole. Time depth. <laughs> Infinity. It just keeps going. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. How small does it get? Oh, it is actually great. It is actually getting a little bit smaller. A 24 hour stream of this. Stanley, I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. We're just gonna say, yeah, there's no falling infinitely. I mean, Portal did it, didn't it? Come on. Uh, I think I do have to press G. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. 
Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. <sighs> had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about, and I've had enough of the hole for a lifetime. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. <laughs> if this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay, yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top and we'll see if it gets any shorter. <laughs> well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh. Who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Well, hmm. it doesn't work. <laughs> is the um, teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. You get 2 p.m. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... Uh, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity. No, I want out. <laughs> Do I dare press G again? Nope. <laughs> G doesn't work. At least I have the bucket. I feel reassured. <laughs> it's not even like a tall thing. Oh. going down. Change your perspective. <laughs> it's a deep hole. Very <laughs> anime. G, change your perception. <laughs> so G changes the music. Change your reality. That music sucks.
change yourself. <laughs> Upside down. <laughs> Just get to change whatever you want. <laughs> Jeez. Stanley? 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 Oh good, you're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley. Because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. The hell? Actually loaded? Oh wait, it went back to the beginning. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Wait, I already have the reassurance bucket. What happens if I go back up here with it? Do I get two? Go to dual wield them? I guess it I guess it detects I've done it already. So it just puts you back in the beginning of this. <laughs> That's new. So is there a... Uh, uh, was there anything else I missed in this place? Because I saw, like, the exit, but... Let's see. Infinite hole. Fine, it ended. <laughs> it's just... Actually, I want to go see what the hole is, actually. Let's go to the hole. Back to the hole, lads. Oh, no. We're not allowed to see it again. I felt like the infinite hole, uh, it, it, it hyped me up a little bit too much. Alright, so we can't go there. So I'm gonna try to go upstairs again, because that was, uh, another one that wasn't labeled as ending, so... At least we have our bucket. This is settings world champion. Oh, I see. Mostly infinite free achievement. Yeah, so. I thought it said end, but I guess it might be end. Who knows? Settings world champion. Okay, just go into settings. <laughs> is there something in here that I have to press? Actually, we could raise our, our thing here. Where's the settings world champion? Reset. Delete save data. Let's see. Oh, there's nothing else here. Settings world champion. Come on, there's gotta be something in there, right? One-handed walking. Presentation. Oh. Controls, maybe? That's what I was kind of thinking. Yeah, there's nothing in there. So it said there's actually a simplified one-handed walking. Hold left and right mouse buttons to like Oh, you can just hold them both down, I see. In case you want to, you know. I don't think there's anything there for me. Alright, well. It's ability setting. Come on. There's gotta be something with this. Is it a disability setting? Show color labels. Oh. No, none of that. You don't need any of that. <laughs> I hope we've uh, seen everything.
Oh yeah, the ending was somewhere here. Uh, yeah, exit. Yeah, okay, we'll go exit then. Cause I don't think I've uh, we've done epilogue, we've done collectibles. Just it's just the the settings world champion. Uh, that's the one I wanted to know if there's like in there. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Ooh. These are pretty dank posters. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Guess I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead, take a look. Oh, uh, settings. <laughs> she knocked me back to the venue. <laughs> it's got like music and everything. Do you full credits? <laughs> this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company the in balloons. a big building where he was employee number 427. The, the balloons are employee here. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul renting, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. <laughs> something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. The extra room. <laughs> they, they, all the intro and everything changed. 
It was great. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah, shit, 420. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Too immature. Stanley felt the bucket calling to him, <laughs> begging him to pick it up. Why was he not doing it? A bucket. Oh, I, I missed it. <laughs> I totally did. I totally glanced over it. By the way. Oh sure. Stanley picked up the bucket. <laughs> like how I have to tell it, it. It told me they knew I would, I would miss it. They're fucking blind. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still, no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? <laughs> that your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. <laughs> no, you can't actually drop the, the bucket. I actually tried to do that when I started this. So. Okay, I've got you something which I think <laughs> will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. Ah. There. Now it's settled. No more debate. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. <laughs> well, they need something with the broom closet again. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. <laughs> I want more stickers. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. <laughs> Okay, I think that's it, it telling me that uh, it's all done. I had to try. 
coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Should I go all the way to the end with the bucket? <laughs> it seems to have a unique dialogue for it, so... Ah, uh, we can shit in the bucket. Oh. Oh. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. <laughs> Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. <laughs> Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. Oh dear, I'm actually going to let it, uh, let it, uh, let it pass. We'll just wait. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. <laughs> I love the bucket. 2845. <laughs> it's waiting a long time for me. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, what did do? Bucket needs to be a TF2 item. <laughs> did they even add more weapons to TF2? The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. <laughs> Everything's with the bucket. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. <laughs> I feel I need to get the end with the bucket. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? <laughs> what kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. 
But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. <laughs> I, I gotta go all the way <laughs> to the end with the, with the Bucket here. When at last they came to the source of the room's power, Stanley and the Bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Stanley and the Bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. <laughs> Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... To... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. <laughs> Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. <laughs> That's a good one. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah, the whiteboard ending. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. <laughs> Dog mode. <laughs> Stanley pressed the bucket upon every little thing in the office. Nothing responded to the bucket's touch, but it did little to discourage Stanley's belief in the magic of the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. It looks like everything is like has new dialogue when you have the bucket. Like everything. That's great. Well, and all the old stuff. Was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Fuel. Truly, being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right, then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. Why is the bucket getting all the blame? 
Perhaps this was where the bucket felt most truly at home. Here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. I, I, I think it's replaced every reference of Stanley to the bucket. Stanley decided to just give the bucket absolutely as much time as it needed to be in the lounge. Clearly, the bucket and the employee lounge shared a special connection. <laughs> oh. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge and they took the first open door on their left to get back to business. Do not lie if you're right, lying right now, stop. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room, go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes, go there. Go to the cargo lift. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. That's something new over there. We gotta go over there next time. I, that that's something I haven't seen. Said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. <laughs> now pick up the phone. Said the bucket. Pick up the phone and. It <laughs> Whoa! Hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders, Stanley? I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? I'm... Oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. What is comedic timing? <laughs> what is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly... Can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times, just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, 
you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invaders who threaten our very existence and who very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles, all of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Looks like everything is different when you have the bucket, by the way. Every single ending, which is kind of neat. Ah, they don't want you to kill yourself. Actually, can I just jump through here? No. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. <laughs> you know, I'm a fan of the bucket. I'm a believer. There's a, there's a couple of other ones I haven't done yet, so we'll see it. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... I think I need to go back and re-watch that instructional video again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. We're back at the phone already. No, no, no. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, oh. we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. <laughs> I guess I have to. I guess I do have to go Here back. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> When Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, <laughs> it's a they entered the loop. door on the left. Is it going to be the same again? Oh. Actually, wait. It, it actually locked me in here. Oh, I wasn't actually going to do it again. Oh, well. Back to the phone. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. Oh, no, no. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> When Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. 
No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? <laughs> to stop. Oh. Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you... Um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. <laughs> let, well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? Pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see. Why did it even have uh, uni Unity on there? This is Source Game, isn't it? Unless they poured it or something, you know. I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. So let me try going outside again with the bucket. We'll see what happens if Stanley it's different. Clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Yes. Whispered the bucket into Stanley's different. ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed, desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein, of sadness and regret, and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger, of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself, perhaps if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? he screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. <laughs> this is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... My God, Stanley, you did it! You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game and we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Uh, one second. Uh, there's one thing I I have that's missing, but I'm gonna I'll try and do that. Uh, I'll have to restart the game for that because I didn't realize that it would uh not be here. I I can't I can't enable the console so. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. What languages are available? A bunch. The bucket turned out to be correct. Was this no? Never mind. The bucket was wrong. I'm, I'm actually not sure. Stanley I think they just do subtitles, left. actually. Back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes. Go uh, there. Go to the cargo lift. I see. So there's a. There's something here, but oh wait, wait you have to go over oh, on the boxes. It's a, it's one of the Stanley figurines. <laughs> Another miniature Stanley figurine. This um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands, Stanley figs, or what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. Okay, we just fell down something. Oh. New content. What's some Stan Marines? Have you tried to game glitch the game yet? Uh, besides the intentional ones, uh, that's pretty much it. it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms why everything feels so what do i do with this treasure i can i can monetize it yes it's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket this is my golden ticket but I have to be careful because as soon as this gets out there's going to be a target on my back even now I don't know who might be trying to get what's that who's there All this for a bucket. <laughs> I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh? Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. 
Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest, and this was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. You double the bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should there. have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Danger everywhere. <laughs> No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. <laughs> Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. So every ending is changed to be bucket related. This is what they worked on, I think. Now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item 1. Is this a bucket? Correct. It is a hologram of a bucket, <laughs> not an actual bucket. <laughs> Item two, is this a bucket? Correct. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. <laughs> you can't get them wrong. Item three, is this a bucket? Incorrect. This is a bucket. How, is it, how does the 3D printed version of a bucket not count as a bucket? Item four. Is this a bucket? <laughs> it's a tractor. What? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. Is this a bucket? Correct. This is a bucket. <laughs> Item six. Is this a bucket? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. It is and isn't a bucket. Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Yes. Thank you. There's nothing here. Of course it isn't a bucket. We both know full well that nothing isn't a bucket. Wait. When I say nothing isn't a bucket, that makes it sound like I'm saying everything is a bucket, which of course is not true. Unless... Is that what you think? Answer me straight, Stanley. Are you trying to tell me that you believe everything is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? 
Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. No. Okay. Here we go. Don't do that. <laughs> I need the bucket. What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait. Was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my god, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what... I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. <laughs> Reality is just a bucket. The good old bucket. Just Stanley in the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. So what if I die with the bucket? And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. But, but Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps Where are we going today? The bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This I want to do the full phone one. The meeting room. Uh, this way. Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no. Never mind. The bucket was wrong. The basement Standing ending? The Which one would that to be? Back to the meeting room. I'm, I'm trying to remember what the... Because I no, did like the full one. Said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes. Good. Said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. <laughs> That's on the couch. Press G to take me to work with you. <laughs> the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. <laughs> Press you to bring him back home with you. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? 
I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Oh, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Don't listen to a lot of press that for us to go back home. Oh. You see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. Does Jade ignore anyone in your life except for me? It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket. This cold, empty bucket. This sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. <laughs> Leave him real, don't you, Stelly? Tea to go back home. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Really the same day with me over and over. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Oh no. I'm I'm having feelings for the bucket. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. The bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. What are we going to do on the bed? Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... <laughs> Back to work, Stanley. I thought the phone had a message. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a good bucket, a strong bucket, a humble bucket, a committed bucket, a bucket of culture and distinction. Are oh, the buckets on top? Stanley <laughs> clutched the bucket tightly to his chair. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling I... him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. The window with the bucket was like the first and thing I did. Was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the... And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. <laughs> hey, the adventure line. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the Adventure Line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Yep, that, well now it's, now it's a completely new ending with the uh, uh, the Adventure Line. It's gonna bring us somewhere new. Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well.
Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. <laughs> Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. No. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the Bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your Bucket. Destroying Buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... <laughs> Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. <laughs> Just everything's bucket. Okay, so now we have to go back there and actually destroy the bucket, I think. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps... Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. I guess it's that there is an option to kill it. I, I, I didn't try and go on the thing and, and kill it, so... But we're gonna do that now. the bucket calling to him telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. I'll try and do the basement one. Is that the one where you go down the left side of the stairs? I'll do that one after this one. Oh, good, Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the Adventure Line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's... Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Da, 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 da. 
Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. <laughs> Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Why can't I put it in there? Ah, now I... listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. Because you're not. I don't know you're what not the bucket destroy will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it. So means. it, it does, you can't actually do it. Singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, "How does a character with only one personality trait deserve you just to look join at the it. pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters?" Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What <laughs> other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back <laughs> to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer. I would so love to. That damn bucket. Quickly now. The fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... Well, shucks. The poor Bucket Destroyer. The Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. Yeah, so nothing's different. Even if we tried to get rid of it, dang. I mean, it's not that the bucket never, bucket destroyed never uh, stood a chance, it's that the bucket is, we're too attached to the bucket. What can I tell you? Can't just destroy it. Oh. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered. We'll, we'll try, we'll try the, uh, the downstairs uh, path now. Actually, I wonder if you do the broom closet again with the stickers already on it, actually. Because that's where I got the stickers last time. Oh. There will be a reward for finding them all. How can we find them? Trust in the completionist instinct. This is new. Oh, come on. There's got to be one somewhere around here. Uh... Inside, so we got the large room boxes in private in, but smelly place. So these are the ones I've gotten? It tells you where they are? A private smelly place for an important person. Oh, uh, that's the uh, the bathroom. I found one in there. A large room, lots of boxes. Okay. So something here. We'll screenshot it. Stair, something to do with stair. Somewhere near both red and blue and nearby a fireplace. Is this time to kind of game? Looks like uh, 427, ha ha ha. wants them so bad. All right, all right, we, we gotta find them. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, <laughs> no stickers. <laughs> no stickers. I guess that's it. 
I, I would say let's go down. Staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Ah, we found it. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. <laughs> but Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, <laughs> everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Wait, I Who got rid of that. What sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket? And indeed, now he noticed the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious. He exclaimed, without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley. Find me. <laughs> He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, it froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. <laughs> it was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. The real bucket was inside of me the whole time. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> backflipped all the way to work. We work from home now. Wait. Stanley thought to himself, am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Very lucky indeed. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. So, so the, the elevator going down, that's the confusion ending, right? Ah. Yes, more of the uh, Stanley figurines. Yeah, that was the one where I, I did that one when I tried Coming to go down, to right? Days, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Which one is the door where it's kind of screwed up? Uh, 
Is that it? So near a fireplace, somewhere here. It, this is the one where you can come through, right? Oh wait, there's uh, uh, one of the computers here. Elevator down was confusion. Stepping in. Ah, here we go. I even had the bucket with me. <laughs> we go all the way down here, or no? This is completely. Uh, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. So it even crossed it out. <laughs> the good old bucket. <laughs> so we just come all the way back. No. No, the orders were still missing. For now. Oh yeah, this one opens. I remember now. You are now leaving. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I really want some more stickers on my bucket. I also wish now my name was Jim. Have you I've done the one after you closed your door after getting, uh, getting the bucket? Actually, I haven't done that. Uh, that's a good point. I'll do that one. Uh, I'll do that one. Uh, I think next. Just try to remember where all of them all are, are. There's one where you can type in SV cheats and you get like a, a weird ending too. But I, I don't have my dev console on, so you have to like enable it. So I have to like quit the game, enable it, come back in. My dad's nickname was Jim. There you go. He probably would have flipped the hell out when he when he saw that. They wanted to say Mike. Uh, I can't see shit here. How could I just let the how, how could I let the bucket just go? Someone was following Stanley. He was sure of it. If he checked over his shoulder now, he would surely catch them. It was only a matter of time. Oh, wait, it's actually gone. What? It's it's actually gone. We need the bucket again. Well, I, if, if I go back there, do you think I'll get it? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to be coming to a staircase. <laughs> Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. So should I, try, should I, I guess I should try and go back there and see what happens, maybe? Okay, I think we all... <laughs> I don't have the bucket, I need it.
Trust in the completionist instinct. I need the bucket, I couldn't let it go. I was even going to do the thing which you told me, dude, to go back in the office. Do we have to go all the way back up there? Maybe he's just gone for like the next one. Maybe that's all it does. But at either rate, it's still worth it to come out, come up here and do this one. So, <laughs> I I just like his uh, tender, uh, tender loving of the bucket uh, as he as he sends it out. One can only hope. I mean, they put so much effort into the bucket. There's no way that it's just gone forever. There's no way. It's also playing with my art. I didn't want the bucket to go. I didn't mean it. How else will I efficiently bring liquids from one place to another? So you literally just let just the bucket go. Yeah, so same deal, but I don't have the bucket now, so let's see what happens. And that's it. <laughs> I want to want to do that input with the. Uh... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Oh, Stanley I can't. I can't do that with it. Oh, yeah, I came back. Perhaps he had simply missed a <laughs> replacement bucket. And try not to lose this one too, you dolt. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so you can't do. Since the since the door closes, you can't do that clo that the door closing one uh, with it. <laughs> Replacement bucket. So you can't you can't do those two endings with that. You can you keep on jettisoning on your buckets? Touched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I'm sure the di the the dialogue is the same for that. All right, so we need to find somewhere red and blue and a nearby fireplace. So we'll, we'll we'll see if we can find the, the fireplace one. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warp but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Yes, I don't really see anywhere around here. We could try going back up as well. Ah, oh, there it is. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then, different in the sense that we used to have none of them, and now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. <laughs> Let's try going back up the elevator, too. Where's a red and blue room? I'm trying to remember that. Because I'm pretty sure you have to have the bucket with you to do this kind of stuff. I didn't say anything different. Wait, Stanley said to Ah, it does. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. So this one's different too. The only get figurines you have the bucket. I think so, but I haven't tried not do I haven't tried not coming up Here with the bucket. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. 
he took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. <laughs> I did have such joy. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. <laughs> we need three. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Why do you, why do you betray me so, bucket? Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He yes, knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? I mean, third time's a charm is probably it. It is the number three. Oh, now it's not even talking to me. <laughs> said Stanley. Right, I go know again. what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. <laughs> Threes. I, I think I think I think he's sending a, a message it. to Valve. One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity <laughs> to share a true connection with a loved one. Three again. Three three. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, <laughs> uninteresting. He was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. 
the bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious, that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit, only a silence that consumed the space between friends. This is getting too real. Having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Pat's, Pat's my bucket. <laughs> oh no. And now the button ending. Back to version number three, I guess. Uh, <laughs> oh, no narrator here this time. Can't bring the bucket with me. How can it be truly heaven? All right, I don't think anything really happens here. <laughs> a soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started and if it did it stopped shortly after stanley hoped that he would one day see weather it takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent stanley checked his ego and then proceeded on stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the there was a red and blue room Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's try and get the last figurine. We have to get the last one. Somewhere both red and blue. I, I, I'm trying to remember where that is. Is that like in like the second last room or what? Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. It's a game you play after a bunch of Factory streams. You, you support it? Oh, why, why thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember it either. Manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I'll continue dragging the answer. It's not on the, on the thing. That the red and blue doors were a lift thing? I'm not sure either, actually. I don't know. Well, like, there's more. There's more endings to do with the bucket. So, like, it's not like we're running out of things to do. There's still a few more things that I, I remember. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read "Mind Control Facility." Take turn right, go on the lift, jump down while it's rising. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible scene. I think I did that with the bucket hold. though. Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. Was it a marker thing? I'm not sure actually. That's that's the only one I'm I'm not too sure about, but like I said, there's a couple places we can still go to. Monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. I would turn the mind contro no! control machine though, he on. screamed into the bucket. He couldn't <laughs> accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. See, I, I thought here maybe there's colors point. here. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, 
eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Uh. Hey. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. <laughs> Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. <laughs> Silly birds. <laughs> all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps Stanley cradled the so, in a gentle I, I think I already went off the lift delicate, to the right. Yet I haven't tried to the bucket, I haven't tried to die in the uh, the, the other door room, door so we can try that. I'm trying to think of anything else I haven't done. It's like where the hell would it fucking somewhere red and blue? It, they haven't been hard to find, but that one I just Nothing, nothing uh, comes to mind with that one. So, have you? Can you go off the lift to your left? Have you tried jumping off the lift? Yeah, I did. I did the walkway the thing. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the bosses. The lift to the left, like so. I thought that this door opened. Oh wait, it, it does open. Cool. Business strategy. Classic. I don't think it brings you anywhere ever. Well, that's it for that one. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indic. The bucket did not react, except, except perhaps a tiny glow of warmth. Subtle, yes, but an unmistakable spark from somewhere deep within. <laughs> The letter, th the number three. Left of mind control. Uh, now I'll do the. I'll do left of mind control right now. Actually, I'll see if that one's uh, Stanley guessed different. The correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. I'm trying to think of where else uh, that would be.
Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind oh. Control Facility. Let's see this one. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. It's like the walkway right below the lift may have a different the door pilot. Was not shut. I'll go back there then. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. What happens if I go back? Oh, I think it's not not nothing really. I mean, I have no At intention. Point, Stanley and the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Quake 4 all over again. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. Where's it my was bucket? a glorious bucket to behold. It's gone now. <laughs> the bucket welcomes you to the grand exhibit. <laughs> Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? No oh, bucket. It's just slowly going up, I guess. 25 buckets. I think that's tw not 25. The, photogra the photographer experienced cat uh, catatonic shock for several weeks uh, as a result of euphoria for the exposure to this many buckets at once. <laughs> Inferno bucket. It was in the medieval era, which powerfully luring de de drove dozens of nations to war with one, uh, uh, with one <laughs> another control that billions died despite all of it. So the fact remains that we could control a bucket. Ah, the stress bucket. Worrying. <laughs> negative forecasting, negative thinking, lack of reassurance. Something so simple, just a bucket. <laughs> Pre prehistoric uh, buckets. No man can own a bucket. And certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. Is this it thing is in the man first room? who should kneel before the bucket. Sorry, I, I think there was another way in the in the uh, in the in this room. What was there? I know that was. This is the only way. I don't know why I thought there was another way. Is that a cave drawing? We know that buckets predate the existence of mankind. <laughs> Notice how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. Buckets are fucking serious. The hanging bucket. 
This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. However, <laughs> where grasp of the bucket may be, it may always be out of reach. Your, this distance inevitably is for our own good. Oh, it's the it's the hole. Oh, never mind. I got the bucket again. Just have just have a little faith. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements. If only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Of the Dude, like, how's that a painful death? It's not, it's not like, it's, it's sort of a quick death, I would call that, you know? Not really painful. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps ah, Stanley's bucket. The only co-worker he would ever truly need. So you think there's another path the off the elevator, so I'll give that a shot. The correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him. Telling him like I said, I, I'm pretty sure I did it was simply the right the first time. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Did I go down the, uh... Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. So was there something over here? Nah. We can try that maybe next time. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Wait, I might be there? What do you mean? Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Because uh... I jumped off of it already. Go back to the dark quarter? Well, I don't think I can really go back. Yeah, it's it's pretty much done. So uh... Maybe you can try going back down here. I've already done this one, though. Did I have the bucket with me when I did this one? And I remember. Oh yeah, I did have the thing with with it, so we'll just go begin the game again. So you said Dark Quarter. You, not this one, you mean when I'm on the lift? Oh, I think I, I remember what you're gone. talking about. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. So that's the one on the right side, right? No, no, surely not. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered. When you were on the lift, jump down, but onto the ground to the walkway beneath. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Uh, I think. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this no? Never mind. So, it was wrong. so you're saying, so you're not saying in there, right? You're saying in here, or because I, I don't think you jumped down to the quarter. You jumped down to it on the other side. I don't even remember. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance Got here. section and walked straight well, ahead to the opposite door. I was like, I may, I may look it up uh, uh, in a sec here. Oh yeah, this just brings me back back in. It's a, <laughs> it's a little hard to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to come through this whole thing. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. I don't think there's any other endings I'm really missing, if I can recall. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once let me, let's, again stunned let me, to discover let me have a look here. of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours. Did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos? It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor so he did that of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was two eight four five. 
Uh, let me see here. I'm just looking at it. Oh, so the door choice is red or blue, but that's that's then not when I had the. His thumbs, trying to I have to not have the the bucket useless, then, since he could never possibly know that the combination was two eight four five. So I, I found like a I found like a little page that has uh, all the possible endings. By the way, two eight four five. Let's try to open it up somewhere. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I can also. Because uh, someone actually made like a flowchart, actually, of all of them. Forgot, yeah. but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. All right, let me let me see if there's anything else in here. Power on. Uh, escape museum. Okay, I don't. I don't think there's much more, but I'll, I'll try one more thing. I think. I think we've actually done most all, all of them. <laughs> Holy fuck! You're playing something other than Pectoria? No, it's not. That's a lie. Oh, it's six nine six nine. I I, I remember I, I tried all the immature things like one through three seven and all that kind of stuff on the uh, on the keypad. We've actually gone through most of them. So the. Uh, Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. I did try the escape path. Oh, that already is turned on. We're gonna go back. We're gonna press that again because that does some stuff. That does something different too. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Hey, thanks, Space Lamp. How are you doing? Uh, was the bucket I, under the mind control facility's influence as well? Oh, I can't. Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? <laughs> what kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. You have to wait for a second, I think. I, I want to go back. I think if we just wait, right? People streaming can host another streamer. <laughs> yeah, you described it. Do you have to go like here? Oh, come on. There's gotta be a way to get up back up here. Why is that? Oh, there we go. Now it's gone. This is probably something I never did when I did this on YouTube, too. <laughs> What's your favorite ending uh, space lab? Give me one with the bucket, come on. The secret room's 2014. <laughs> Don't touch the secrets. High resolution secret texture. Secrets. <laughs> it's also very loud. No, he screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control. Never. One friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. 
the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Oh, three. Well. I guess no approval from the Bucket. When at last they came to the source of the room's power, Stanley and the Bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Can we just leave? Oh, well, I guess not. Well, I've done I've done the both these endings, but I'll, I'll just do like the uh, do the do the yes one again. Maybe this time we'll skip with the uh, with the bucket now. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? He falls to the weird center pit yes. thingy. Not they really. Had done it. it doesn't Stanley go anywhere. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and to... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room lingering in uncertainty until finally the truth hit stanley square in the face this building did not want the bucket to leave even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket needed the soothing warmth of the bucket or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket no 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 stanley can't leave this place not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. So, so one of these achievements is called Settings World Champion. Set all sliders in the menu to all available numbers. <laughs> so... All right, so that's one. You can just do it with the, uh, oh God. <laughs> no, not quite. Oh, this one I have to do as well. I guess I, <laughs> I guess you have to do this one. All sliders. It, it literally says all available numbers. <laughs> Do you think it opens the, uh, I mean, I don't know how to get back to the new content place. Now I wish, now I wish I had to this story of a man named Stanley. <laughs> World champion indeed. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Nope. You've said all available this... numbers. <laughs> We're the problem. <laughs> To get to new content, you just have to relaunch the game five times. Really? <laughs> I'm 
trying to do it though. Is there any sliders here? No. Nope. Oh. I mean I've done I've done all the sliders. Uh oh, this one I haven't done. <laughs> all right, and nope. That doesn't seem to doesn't seem like there's anything else. Any sliders though? Do, do these count as sliders? I don't think they would, right? They're they're not sliders though. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Settings champion though. Is there any, uh, like maybe if I had a controller, maybe that, maybe that would make a difference, but maybe I was supposed to do it near the door. All, right. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Well, there's one Stanley ending I know of. to go to the meeting room. As Stanley lifted his bucket, he felt a connection to all buckets everywhere. This adventure, he decided, Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. It says four, so 430 times. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. Try to do it with a bucket too, see if there's a difference a little. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. You see, now that you've gotten the bucket involved, my standards have gone up. <laughs> Merely clicking a single door is no longer enough. Now, I want to see you press this bucket against multiple doors. Now that's the kind of thing that merits an achievement. Why don't you put 20 bucket touches into door 417? There, all the arrow buttons on the general tab count. The hell, they're all, the end is never the end. Okay, great. Now, go touch the bucket on door 437 a few times. Four three seven. Ah, oh, there it is. Yes, now we're getting somewhere. How about door 415? Give it some bucket love. Now back to door number four three seven. <laughs> All because I got the buck involved. You know, I think the copy machine needs some attention. Why don't you rub the bucket on it a bit? All right, back to room four one seven. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Bucket love, man. Okay, now bring the bucket on top of employee 419's desk. Yes, this is great. Now the bucket knows exactly what it's like to be employee 419. Now, let's introduce it to door 416. We've almost got it. Now make the bucket and the copy machine touch again. <laughs> Finish it off, Stanley. Five touches of the bucket on door four. Yes! We did it! <gasps> wow! That felt amazing. You know, not all buckets will get this kind of experience. 
they won't all know what it's like to slam repeatedly against nearly every door in one section of an office building. Or what it's like to be employee 419. Buckets may dream of an experience like this, but few can say they've truly lived it. You've given a bucket hope today. Stanley, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> so the Stanley the red and blue room, I may this was not the correct have to uh, start Stanley the game without the bucket. Because I believe it's going to employee lounge was simply the place to be. I believe and it's going to basically do another little thing. Out to be correct, was <laughs> no, never mind. Just made sweet bucket love. I hope not. I certainly hope not. Is left <laughs> to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this Bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because Buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the Bucket had... He said I need to go all the arrows? Well, the thing about that is, um... Like, I, I, I think I did all of them, did I not? But it's... Oh, yeah, you're right, I did... I got it now. I got this... Okay, so... I, I now want to go back to that room with the new content because I want to see all the stuff there. So, uh, but if I have to restart the game five times to get it, then I'll uh, I'll do that. No, stop! Look there on the wall. You see, there's a yeah, sign. Yes, so I have to. I have to come back with all the no buckets, buckets. I think. Past this point, Stanley. How could you think it was okay to bring the bucket? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll come. We'll come back to the uh, the thing without the bucket. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? So I think I can only Stanley get there without it. To go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, I guess I guess he can't do everything without it. Yeah, like, I, I I think you're Stanley right. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the. I also want to try going room. down to. Well. So the new endings as well. The I want to try going there without first, the bucket because some of them I haven't I haven't been to some of them without the bucket. So. You get something but different every time. To get back to business. Stanley took the first open door on his left. We could also try the confusion ending with the uh, with uh, and try and have the bucket after that. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove Here it. Here it is. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Uh. Give me a chance. And there it is. The last Stigly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. I wonder if any of this you is see? different. There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. 
Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Worldwide leaderboard. Oh. In total. Is this all the people that are... Uh... Is this real? <laughs> this is you. Oh, that's not me. So that's a video thing. <laughs> Forgot the leaderboard. I'm I'm in last place. Error friends list is empty. Only the th the worst three percent players chose the blue door. Ninety eight percent point nine percent of Stanley player. <laughs> this is your superior. A dead rat is offline. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? You're losing Again, two dead rat. Honest answers, please. That nah, didn't. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. So basically, if you if you actually play it for four hours, apparently you get a different ending. I'm just gonna let it die because I'm not playing this for four hours. You heartless bastard! Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. And... Ah, oh, something different now. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. Chuck Alaska. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. So I actually have this game. I was I was meaning to stream it at some point. Oh, dude! Holy shit! I approve.
He, okay, now I really have to play this game, I guess. Alright, we're gonna go watch some fires. Oh, apparently I went completely the wrong way. The Bren Fa it's a Ben Franklin thing back in the day. It says you. I was wondering, if, this is why I kind of went here, because I was wondering if uh, it was still Minecraft. And the answer is no. No, 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 it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing, that big open just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay. Hey, I think this will be just the thing. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Not See, this is exactly what I have. Oh, this just is the a nice big box for you to run around in. Is this there Rocket League? Any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. It's an epic games game. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. I mean, which side am I on? Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I work? Hold on. What are you doing? Oh, I <laughs> fell down by accident, actually. Stanley, Oops. don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Oh, I think I fell down again. Again, it's referencing the original source mod, I believe. All source stuff is amazing, yeah. There's not much to that. Oh, there we go. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. <laughs> it's a shame I can't bring the bucket there. They copped out of, like, uh, two endings with that. What a shame. Stanley, Whoa. I'm sorry. 
But I have to put a pause on things. It's just... It's those figurines. Well. Those figlers. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? Oh. I would love nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. <laughs> Where's my bucket? Now remember, when Stanley found the collectibles. Well, we were already in here at one point, so... Ah, here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. Seven. <laughs> It's <laughs> six. We entered a code two thousand fourteen. I'll try that next, actually. And here was a second Stanlerine. You found this one all on your own, just by poking around in the boss's bathroom. I wonder who did that, Stanley. I wonder does get the order correct. Back then, I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. <laughs> Which one is this one? Warehouse okay, under stairs. Let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? It was, uh, I think it was the warehouse. <laughs> hey, that's exactly right. I can't kill yourself. In the warehouse. It was the third one. You picked it up, and then after that, you had three of them. I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. <laughs> Let's see, what came next? But actually, any order. found the figly in this pink room. Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. <laughs> There was no pink zone. This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was behind the boss's office. I remember it so clearly. In fact, <laughs> because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Enjoy. <laughs> Windows Movie Maker? Classic. <laughs> it even says it's number five. They must have made one for every single one. Because you can get them in any order, so... <laughs> this is quality shit posting right here. Alright. Thanks for watching my Let's Play. Ah, takes you back, doesn't it? I spent a lot of time making that video, but it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. <laughs> Narrator is a true gamer. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. 
It was a moment unlike any other, except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. And they all go to the same place. And then there was no more, because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, Memory Zone. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. <laughs> uh, that was a good gag. I like the loading screen, uh, the fake loading screen. Okay, yes. The room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. Oh, there's I actually say, 20 of them. All the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going. I want more. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? <laughs> it goes faster. Yes, I love that video. <laughs> so what was this Still one? I don't remember. remember. The pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. We didn't have it from pink room. I don't even remember which one that was. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have muted the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. <laughs> wait, wait, how about under the stairs? I guess I guess there's just nothing there. I can't remember the pink room. Apparently, I don't. That was the basement one. Oh, that's that's right. I was like at the bottom of the stairs or something. This was our second figure. Yeah. Don't you remember? Is that the yes, bottom of the stairs? I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. This is it. The very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figurines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? Oh, fuck it, the jump thing. Look, it's the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then, but time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more. More memories. Oh, yes! The two doors! Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. Oh, same place. And before everything else, there was your office. Yeah, it's a circle they let you jump in, but you have like anything else? 30 was of them. Was there something that came before your office? And I've used them, so There's I can't jump anymore. I feel like I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. <laughs> yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then, I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions. He would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But uh, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, 
I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I wonder what's in the room Stanley when you have the bucket to now. To the meeting room. Perhaps what new mysteries lay in store for our bucket-loving heroes today? Let's find out. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Reboot the game entirely. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. I mean, perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find out. Who, who am I to say otherwise? <laughs> Let's reboot the game entirely. <laughs> Let's do it. Reboot the game. Oh, unable to sink. Very su subtle hint, yeah, I'd say. Enter the current time. Uh, where's my... It's not AM, it's PM. So this is the current time for me. Also, where's my mouse cursor? Hang on, hang on. It's not going to click. Can I just say something? Thank you for actually setting up the clock both times that you booted up the game. <laughs> a lot of people don't take that step seriously. Just leave it at the clock at 12 and call it a day. You've actually taken the time to set the clock and I appreciate that. I was wondering about that. Why, like, that doesn't can't just read my system time. That's how I know that you care about the experience. You're paying attention. I don't even have any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. <laughs> I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative next time you boot up the game and to see the screen, just take set your clock to your favorite time. Go ahead and pick whatever time you want, even if it's not the correct time you've earned it. Really, you go back to the video game now. Absolutely the meta elements like this. This is the story of a man named Stanley. It's great. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. I still want to go to back to the and other then place. one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Got achievement. Welcome Stanley back. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps. Now this, Stanley thought to himself, this is a bucket. And indeed it was. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. 
Oh, you made me reboot the game. Still, no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. So nothing appears to really have changed. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire. The bucket did not react. Except, except perhaps a tiny glow of warmth. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it so I guess, the bucket knew all along? So I guess was that was not any different now. Him? Yeah, yes. achieving that's up. This is certainly the most logical explanation. Well, um, oh yeah, 2014. I forgot about that one. Um, well, let me try one thing. So first off, he said, um, if I reboot it five times, you'll get the new content again, which I, I kind of want to get. I also want to put the dev console on. Uh, let me see. What, what's the, what's the thing you put, you do have to do for that? Let me uh, see here, because that's a that's a fun one. Uh, is it properties launch option slash dash console? I think Let's try that out. All right, this time I'm gonna enable, I'm gonna put in my favorite time. We're gonna put in 420. Your favorite time of day. AM, too. <laughs> or could you not resist giving the correct time again? After all, I don't want you to enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay, I'm curious how accurate 420 is. Let's use another slider to find out. How accurate is uh, It's very inaccurate. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> can just say regardless of the action of the clock, a great time adjusting these settings. <laughs> Look, I'm learning more about you and how you like to, things to be set. It's good to collect data. Uh-oh. I wish you had more sliders, but we've gone through all the sliders I have. So let's go invent some new sliders to gather data on you. Shouldn't be too hard. Let me whip a couple ones up. Should we be ready next time you boot the gap up the game? So do I, have, do I have the console? I don't know. I don't have the console. How do you enable the console? One second. Enable console source game. Developer console. I thought it was like a... So that was pretty simple to do. Enabling it. Uh, let's see. So I, I I so dash console I thought would have done it. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I, I th what I put in should have worked actually. That should have enabled the console. Maybe it was one of those things that the, uh... yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Just a slider until it's barely visible. Damn it, my mouse cursor's gone. <laughs> Just the slider until the cat and dog are friends. <laughs> Just... Can I just make them not friends? I hate <laughs> Just... It's a slider until number five becomes nine. I got a lot of sliders here. <laughs> until adjust the slider until you stop adjusting the slider. Which of the two made up words is the most appealing to you? A, a cockubuncle or scrum tush? I think scrum tush is the most one, actually. Not gonna lie. Please don't adjust the slider. All right. Do you know what time it is right now? Yeah, the computer. Is the time that it is now the correct time? I assume so. What's the time anyways? Yes. Is there anything about yourself you haven't told me? Yeah. Uh. Yes. 
Will you come back to visit me? No. <laughs> it's very elaborate. See if it goes, it does it again. I did think that was a weird thing when it when it started up, but it was pretty amusing. How do you get the console on now? I need the console. What time is up? Does anyone really truly know? <laughs> of course they don't. Nobody knows anything. You and I don't even know each other. We're like strangers. Sure, I've adjusted all the game settings to your exact specifications, but who hasn't? It's just what I do, like a day job. And now the job is over. Still more information for me to gather. I've collected all the data I need that I can. I still don't really know you, and you don't know me. And neither of us will know what time it is. <laughs> Some settings are just unsettable. But if I'm being totally honest, the clock doesn't have anything to do with the game anyways. You won't have me here when the game starts next time, but that's okay. Your games are meant to be played alone. You like being alone, don't you? Damn. This is the only information I really learned about you. <laughs> Maybe it's time for me to leave. There's one setting I need to adjust, but it may take a little time before I'm ready for that. It's not really a job of destruction, but that's okay. Perhaps you'll see me again if you can find me. Talk soon. <laughs> this, is, this is the creepiest thing. Oh, there's an epilogue. <laughs> many, many years later. Dude, it was firing shots at me. What's that fair? It just it just starts up the desert, okay. I missed the bucket already. I'm sure I could get into the distance into those mountains. To the moon. Let's go. All the chairs. find happiness until I find the bucket. <laughs> I wonder what's in this thing. Where you go over this first. How does it put that, that the obvious thing there, and I'm going to go to the non-obvious thing. We got it. We won. Do you require the first game now? We got the bucket back. It, w it waited for me the whole time. I need more Stanley collectibles. So now I feel comfort.
review the Stanley Parable 2. Where the first game seemed uh, was, seemed with originality, Stanley Parable 2 was dull, uninspired, and, and insulting to its fan base. Oh, man. That review will stand the test of time. Stanley Parable developers. No more spinoffs, no more sequels. Uh, it doesn't give a specific date. <laughs> Get on green. It's dated for today? It's not July 9th, though. The first one was, oh. Jim. 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 Where's Mike? Jim. 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 Well, then we'll do something different. Jim. Jim. Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. Hey. Stanley. There you go. Stanley. Jim. Stanley. <laughs> it said my name. I said, why don't we'll do something different? Well, my character's name, at least. Could, oh. Did we get them all? I, yes, we did. We <laughs> got all the collectibles. Uh oh, hello again. Nice to see you. It's terrible to learn that there will never be another Stanley Parable game. Did you read what the developer said? Preserve the integrity of the franchise? What nonsense. The Stanley Parable is not uh, sacred. We do not need to protect it. Screw the legacy. Let's keep making Stanley Parable games until the sun explodes. Let's turn this franchise into the ground. Let's drag it through the mud and back. And yeah, what if people hate it? Who cares? You see, that's the narrator's problem. He was too obsessed with what people thought of his work. Don't make his mistake. Don't cling to the lettuce legacy. Let it burn. It's a hard effect. Let me show you. Together, we are going to make this deadly parable three. It's simple. All we have to do is change the number in the game title screen. We also need a really dumb subtitle for the game. Something loud and gaudy. Go ahead. Try combining some random words together to make a new title for our game. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Let's do passion of... Or, yeah, passion of the... Uh, uh, wacky. Uh, we'll see. Passion of the uh, Atomic Cowboy. I don't know. Fine. Something like. <laughs> there's a rail gun though. A door to content. Passion of the content. There we go. That's what we'll do. Actually, I like that one. Stanley Parallel Three. Passion of the content. It's, it's absurd. I love it. Every time you start the game, we'll pick. We'll advance the number by, of the sequel by one. I'll pick a new subtitle. That way, Stanley Parable will never end. Nothing in the game itself will change when you do this either. Adding more content sounds like work. No need to do that. It'll just be the same content recycled again and again with the new title screen. <laughs> what do you say? Do we go forward with this plan? I like it. But you have to, have to say, well, let's do it or don't do it. Sure, let's do it. It's good. A new sequel every time you start the game. And you know what? Since you put faith in my idea, I feel like giving you something as well. You see, I'm noticing that the narrator never found a way to give give you the broken achievement, did he? Oh, of course not. I wouldn't expect her to know how. It's been bothering me. Let's fix it. All right, the achievement feet machine is all fixed. See, I'm on your side. We're in this together. Let's keep this train rolling. It cannot end. It's only it's only a spiral and set forever. I must keep the wheel turning. I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, there's only one thing, uh, one last thing we need to do. Please enter the current time. Please just slide until it's all visible. Please, I can't believe enjoy the story of the parable. Action of the content, guys. <laughs> there's a fucking car. <laughs> That's beautiful, guys. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and start it one more time and see how it starts up because it it says it's gonna be something random every time, right?
<laughs> Stanley Parable 3 patch of the content. Oh, man. How can we get... We can get behind that. The best meta joke. It actually is. <laughs> oh, we get to pick one, guys. Oh, it's completely random words. Let's do a pocket full of... Uh, a poison. Stand the parable four. <laughs> Just that's amazing. Begin. All right, let's see if we can get back into that room there. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Yeah, Stan the beginning isn't any different, so let's go back. All right, let's hope that we can go to the All new content room. Were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Finally, yes, the bucket. Yes, 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 I love it. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? Because I have the settings achievement now and then the other thing too, so let's go check those out. I really want to have SV cheats. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, we have to go through all this again. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Do I get my jumps Wait, back? Stanley. I've just now realized that bucket you're holding, it's the bucket I've been working on for my sequel. How did you get your hands on it? Isn't this the <laughs> preview to the sequel? I Why do you have the bucket already. <laughs> this this makes no sense at all. He's referencing the bucket. How do you have the bucket already? Hold on. Did I already show you my ideas for the sequel? I don't remember doing that at all. You're seeing things all out of order. Yeah, All, right. Jumps. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. I don't have any jumps, though. You literally never get the jumps back. The infinite hole, the giant door. Did you see them already? Stanley, none of them are ready yet. I'm still developing them. They're not even close to finished. How did they look when you saw them? Were they captivating? Were they exciting? Did they fulfill on the promise of everything that a sequel to Stanley Parable could possibly be? Had I figured out how the hell to make a sequel to this game? <laughs> Wait, if you're still carrying the bucket around with you, if the bucket is interesting to you, that means I must have made it correctly. Yes. You carrying the bucket with you everywhere is exactly what I set out to accomplish. The bucket is the exciting and captivating new content that I promised. I did it! I win! I made a sequel to the Stanley Parable! Yes, the sign is correct. Thank you for enjoying the new content. Thank you for taking the bucket everywhere with you. Clinging tightly to the bucket, never letting it go. It means I've won. It means I am victorious over the gamers. It is a sweet salve of victory on my soul. Thank you for enjoying the new content. The bucket is the Stanley Parable now. They are one and the same. There is no Stanley Parable without the bucket. I win. 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 All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps one man, one bucket, one chance to seize their destiny together. Return to Stanley Parable 2 Expo Hall.
Acid actually recognizes it's uh, different, I think. Yep. But if you go to the new content without the bucket, well, I mean, that's what I did the first time. So I assume it would just you restart see, Stanley, that. I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? <laughs> Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. All right, so first the achievement. Try out some of the new features. We have to go to the achievement thing. Free and easy achievement. And then we can see the bucket room, and then we can see the other thing, then. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I got it. As you can see, the <laughs> machine actually got is not it. working yet since... What? Wait. What in the holy hell is going on? You got the achievement? Why did the machine work? Stanley, I didn't fix it. I didn't do anything to it. I swear, it was broken just a second ago. Who fixed it? Is someone here? Are we being watched? Oh, God. Composure? Composure. Yes, as you can see, the machine is working as normal as I intended. <laughs> it, um... It truly speaks to the awe-inspiring magic of the Stanley Parable 2. Breathe. Just breathe. This came out today, by the way, so I decided to give it a give it a shot. I, I like it. It's good. Forgot how much it was, but uh, I'd say it's worth it because I, I haven't played it like in what a while. Else? So what other exhibits haven't we seen yet? But I've done this all before. Do I get to wait? Why does he look so mad? All right, let's go up to the settings thing because now I have I should have that now, right? The settings world champion. I have that. I am the settings world. Oh shit! We're the settings world champion. Aha! I can see you've gotten the settings world champion achievement. Well done. You've experienced every setting, traveled to all corners of the settings menu. There's <laughs> nothing you haven't seen. So, just for you, in the Stanley Parable 2, I'm including an entirely new setting, something called Bump Scosity. What exactly is bump scosity? Well, I haven't quite figured that part out yet, but I just know that you'll be able to adjust it on some sort of slider, and that it'll be available from the settings menu. We'll sort the rest of the details out later. I hope you're looking forward to trying out every level of bump scosity in the Stanley Parable 2. Bump scosity. Is there bump scosity now? Yeah. There's bump scosity. You can set it to whatever you want. Oh, dude, it's up to a thousand. Oh, no, no, it just has random numbers on it. The bump scosity scrolled all the way. I've got it all the, all, all the way to the max. We got our bump scosity. Just doesn't even do anything else. It was at like a hundred before. Look at bump scosity. Okay, we need a hundred bump scosity. All right, good.
let's see, was there anything else I uh, needed to do? We got the achievement. We got that. Oh, yeah, the bucket. Let's go to the bucket room again. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Get more collectibles. Let's see the reassurance bucket again. The, yeah, I'll, I'll check out the collectible thing, too, because uh, I did get them all. Let's see if it, like, restarts the counter or something. Do I get two buckets now? Wait, there are two buckets here? <laughs> How did you get a second bucket? Oh no, the warmth and comfort of a single bucket is already so great, so intoxicatingly wonderful. With two buckets, there's no telling. Stanley, can you still hear me? Are you with me? <laughs> Stanley! Oh, thank God. I didn't lose you. Stanley, the power of two buckets was too much. I had to destroy both of them. Oh, no. I know how much the bucket meant to you, but I couldn't take the risk. I hope one day you can forgive me. No. You don't have the bucket anymore. Oh, let's change the balloons to the other one, actually. Okay, I'll be honest. I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy Twelfth Birthday. Which would you go with? You go with the other one. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. <laughs> Get Well Someday it is. And then changes the ball. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Come now. You've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly. But we all have to move on from our mistakes. Still can't use the jump circle. Uh, yeah. Uh, is there anything else that I should do? I guess there's nothing we can do with the merch. I saw the co the new content. <laughs> All right, I'll just get to the uh, name button collectibles. Oh yeah, the collectibles. Let's do that. Well, the name button, I I don't think will will change. I mean, we can see if it changed. I'm curious about the uh, collectibles though. We'll see if that resets or something. Out of order, you've been here already. <laughs> so never mind, they, they, they're onto my tricks. I mean, you could go back to the infinite hole as well, but that, that I doubt would have changed. I mean, you can still you can still try it just to see if it is any different. Baby's all grown up. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as Jim. people. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. Jim Lap. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim. Jim. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's <laughs> name. <laughs> Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. <clears throat> now, allow yourself to become Jim. Jim. All right, fine, whatever. It's just a meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Get out of here. <laughs> I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? Jim. See, if you'd Jim. only played along, Jim. that would have been your name, the button says. But no. Instead, oh... 
Jim. I can't even think about it. I'm Jim. taking the gym button away. Jim, 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 Jim. Oh. This is, uh, no, it, doesn't, it never says Stanley. The only the only button that said Stanley was the one in the epilogue, so. To be fair, though, the first time I didn't. let people named Jim play the Stanley Parable 2. They would appreciate what I've created here. The first time I did it, I uh, let him talk through it, so this is the first time I, I rushed him through it, so the dialogue changed, which is kind of cool. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. I guess we could do the infinite hole again, I guess. <laughs> His face in the floor wasn't even apologetic. I've done this one already as well. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. I'll try and go Stanley up earlier this time, actually. Games as a medium. You see? Isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Great. Now, <laughs> I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Okay. And I guess we're back in the hole now. Did you really need to see it again? I don't know what else there is to say, Stanley. It's an infinite hole. It's exactly what you're doing right now, but forever. There really are so many other fascinating exhibits that I've prepared for you. I really spent quite a lot of time on all this, and I would very much like to show you some more of them. I oh, can't press G. Ahead and press that teleport button again. It, it prevented so me. We can get back to what's really important about. Oh, goodness. Well, this is rather embarrassing, Stanley. I'll be honest with you. I truly did not believe that anyone would actually stay in the hole long enough to hit the bottom. Yes, I know. I told you the hole was infinite, but come on. Who actually wants to fall forever? The hole was plenty deep. It was more than deep enough, in my opinion. Maybe it's you who likes falling too much. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. Yeah, I've already I'll done the full sequence of that. Already. I've already done the full sequence, so I'll just, I'm just going to go back out. Oh, there's a door over there. I don't think I can make it to that one, though. No. Nah. Oh, that's a shame. I've already done that, so if you want to see it, it's earlier in the the thing. Um, I think that's basically it. Maybe I'll maybe I'll have a quick peek and see if there's anything else that is really uh, new. I really want to do. Um, I really want to figure out how to enable the cheats again. So Calling that's what that's all I'll probably look up in a second. Just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it I'll just bring mean? us into this room and just... Uh, Alright, have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? I want to see the thing. Because I want to go to the cheat room with the bucket. Because I'm sure there's something different with that. So Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2.
Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... OK, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. OK, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. <laughs> so I'm going to try and actually go and... Uh... One second. I can, if I browse the files, I think I can do it. Uh, the config. I, I, I saw a thing online of how to do it, which I actually don't. One second. Oh, there. Uh, here it is. Uh, so I want to do this one. Uh, let's see. So I have to find config. Where is it? Um, so there's dev console. Go in game and enable console from options. Otherwise send. Uh, where is that then? Uh, it's a little weird where it is. I just want to enable the console. Where could it be? Uh, you can you can hear my windows like basically having a fucking shit fit right now. Maybe maybe it's not like that. What's boot config? One sec. Let me open that one. Just want to enable the console. That's it. VR disabled. Yeah, wait for new to be okay. Okay. We try and do uh, dash dev console. We'll try that one uh, right now. It was it. It's a little harder in this one. I'm not sure how to do it. Dev console. All right, let's give this a shot. Cause it's supposed to be here, but it's not. So the screen was changed to the clock guy. Is is changed uh, originally through I don't I don't remember. It, but we're supposed to be on like Stanley Parable Five now. Ah, here we go. Stanley Parable Five: The Journey to Coworkers. And now it says two, so it's not even correct. I saw bump bump scarcity though. Yeah, I I can't seem to enable console. I'm so sad. Well, let's see here. This is the story of a man named Stan. So let's see if the balloons are now the white ones. Uh, yes, they are. For a company in a big <laughs> they always do the one you don't prefer. Alright, let me, let me... Come on, it's gotta be somewhere. Let me see here. Maybe I'll find someone who's talking about it. Like, maybe it's on the Steam group or something. Uh... Let's see. Console, no. Let's see. Yeah, I don't really see it. It's really weird because I, I would have would have thought it would be here. 
want to like enable console or something, but I, I just don't see it anywhere. So I, I don't know what uh version of uh and maybe it really is uh is is there like a you know what I think it is? I think this actually is a Unity game now. I'm not gonna lie. I actually didn't realize that, but it actually is. Yeah, there's there's streaming there's some but there's some bucket videos here as well and things like that that you can actually see here. Whole galaxy. Yeah, some it's the just for the background and things like that. They do some they do some interesting things and there's like the silly birds and whatever, so yeah, I don't know how to activate Unity cheats at all. I guess that's something that was taken out of this one. So I don't think I don't think we can do it, so it's just app info and some other stuff, so no. They I, I it looks like they it was actually ported to Unity. Because it doesn't have the same, um, yeah, it actually, this is actually Unity now. I actually thought that was a joke when I saw it in there, but it's actually a Unity game now. So, so that's, um, that's uh, not doable now. <laughs> Can't really change that. Uh, I don't know, was there anything else? I'm trying to remember if there's anything else. Because I wanted the, uh, I wanted to get to, into the cheat room, but no, we can't. Well, okay, there's, there's, okay, so there's a couple of other, there's two other achievements that we can still try. So, looking at now, there's one that just says 8888888. So, that one's a pretty simple one. It's either go to the end and press 8 a bunch of times, or, and 2014, sure, we'll do that too. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. It's bucket time. <laughs> With the bucket, of course. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. And entered the door on his left. And then there's also a speedrun achievement, by the way. So. <laughs> Still, no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more it's than ever. Hilarious time. Perhaps his boss's office was where, he coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire nah, if not for the nothing. soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. Eight. It would be with him always. Uh, I got eight. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he <laughs> shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket nope, not did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I just realized, aren't, so the two games that it had, Firewatch and, what was it? Uh, Rocket League, aren't those both, are they both Unity games? That's maybe why it was changed. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. <laughs> Soothing him, comforting him, what, what reassuring he... <laughs> that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be alright. One of the achievements the is, play Stanley, Stanley Parable for an entire duration of a Tuesday. Be fine. So I just, have to, I just have to idle in the game on, on a Tuesday. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Actually, I guess, I guess we should try the speedrun achievement right now, huh? So let's, let's do that, actually. Alright guys, here's my speedrun tactics. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed no. bucket time. Damn it. We need we need to restart. I, I it wasn't it wasn't efficient. Actually, wait, no, I, I wasn't holding I have to hold a W at the beginning for maximum uh All of his co-workers were gone. It's a little little what trick. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. It's bucket time. I don't see a speedrun slider. I'm Stanley I'm not a professional speedrunner. to his chest and entered the door on his left. 
Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he... Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it any percent all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I actually don't know <laughs> what it, what it is. I think it, <laughs> time is like it gives you a very specific time. It's bucket percent. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, oh. reassuring it that everything would be fine. I only got past one of them really fast. I'm not sure if that matters, though. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He what couldn't time accept is that? it. His own Four minutes, 22 seconds. else's control. Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Bucket percent. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this... Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Well, I actually didn't get it. Was it over? Did I not get it in, uh... I didn't get it, I think. Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest. Oh, I think this doesn't count as completing it because the, the bucket grip of the evil ending is a uh, machine. Freedom was now mere count. moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. So I have to actually complete the it with the uh, learn to roller skate. without the bucket. Stanley I think Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on earth. <laughs> Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and. To what? Wait, what was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. I need to complete it Until with the speedrun. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this Big place. rips, I should have brought it with me. Not such a precious bucket in his arms. This is the count not completing the game. building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As oh, as there's one other thing I want to try. Back, I'll be okay, won't I? So confusion Stanley, ending and then pick up the bucket so after. Now. That that might he be different now. Because you can you can uh, pick it up and then you respawn and then there's different uh, segments actually. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So I'm just going to try doing the speedrun one right now, and then I'll do... Because I, I think the I need to not have Yet the thing. there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's coming to a staircase. Stanley so I'll trigger the uh, confusion one, at one after this one. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, Stanley was in such a rush oh, to get through the story it's as quickly slowing down as my possible, speed run. he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. Dang it. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. No, it's slowing down my speed run. Run is dead. soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. I forget, does that kill it or no? I don't think it does. Because it's just four minutes, right? It's That's really doable. I think they give you a lot of time, so... It killed the run RNG. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I'm gonna go back to speedrunning Factorio Space Exploration. I will complete that game in under, I don't know how much time I, I currently the got to it. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. So you can't Stanley's do this one. Yeah, this one can't so do anymore. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control It does seem really doable, but it's a lot of standing around waiting for the dialogue. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? Yeah, right, right, right. I, I would really prefer if he would be quiet. <laughs> that, that's a meta meme, by no, the way. I actually like the narrator. To believe it. he it's a speedrunning meme. It. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his All right, entire guys, I'm gonna life do a BLJ into the, the off button. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Oh, man. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And I feel, I'm feeling good about this one. Past began I think it's my new PB, guys. Stanley decided that... Although it may, it may, it may have truly Blackness killed the run. And a rising chill of uncertainty. This four, four twenty-two. Was it over? No, not yet. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm not gonna try it again. It's not really that, that he important to me. He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. So maybe I'll get it at the end. And yet. Even as the immense door slowly opened, oh right, because I haven't actually removed on control on it. You have to unsolved. actually win like this way. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? That's why I, I haven't actually as ended it yet. Sunlight streamed into the chamber. He realized none of this mattered to him. It's not any percent. It it's a hundred percent. Or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will <laughs> be <laughs> waiting for the sleep to go down. And that was all he needed. To uh, and that's also why the bucket doesn't work, because you never actually go the out. Anything worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. I'm pressing forward. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. No, nothing the feeling yet. Of liberation. 
the immense possibility of the new path just before. disappointment this was exactly the way right now that things were meant to happen and Stanley was happy how ironic it is you get freedom if you do what the voice says not that ironic <laughs> it's just it, it's you're guided down the story path come on did I not get it I guess I didn't get it I guess the I guess waiting for the thing killed the run so how long was I sitting there Stanley wanted all right to I'm gonna try and do the confusion minutes, and then I'm gonna try and break the bucket with me centuries? after did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? If nothing else, it'll be you nice to see the uh, uh, the adventure line. Stanley came to a the good old adventure line. Door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I want to see if I can bring the bu uh, <sighs> I think yes, I won't be able to, maybe. Room worth admiring, we'll see. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got I think this is confusion track. right here, right? <laughs> I'm expecting... They did mention Skyrim, though. They mentioned it when I talked about the game the rewards the or something. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um... Uh... uh from here, it's, um... Left. Oh, no. No, it's to the right. My mistake. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh, dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh. Who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. So my question is, is it going to force me to not use the, uh, All the bucket? All of co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Standing ah, no bucket. The meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So that's what, that's what they did. They remove it because this is a part of the, uh, the, the whole ending. There's no dialogue for it. When Stanley... Wait. Wait, what? No, I... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over. Completely fresh. Everything should... I'll do this one till the end, though. Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or... A... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then... It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. <laughs> I want the bucket back. By the way, it's like heavily using like portal stuff. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. See, Perhaps it's still not here. Simply missed a memo. <laughs> so you can know that it's not a, not a typical one. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? 
If only we had the bucket, yeah. The bucket just kind of makes everything better, doesn't it? It's the only content we need. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait, never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It... Is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so good job. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. So, the interesting thing is, why did they port it to Unity? Because they had to basically do all that stuff with, like, the portal stuff and whatever. So here's the all adventure right. line. I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Can I choose not to follow it? Oh, yeah. Then I'll just go. No, no, I'm down. We're leaving it up to the line from now on. <laughs> More content than Call of Duty. I mean, it, it, it had a couple hours of new stuff. You see? The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, cut the music, go back and look at that fern. Wait, what? We're back at the office? <laughs> no, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Tisk tisk. Nah, I don't look at the fern. Oh, no, 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 not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... No, oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? <laughs> now, yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley. I'm ready for it. Oh, no, not you again. Stanley, 
I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Oh, hold up. What's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight, eight times? <laughs> That's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I'd I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the timer to... stopped? Does that mean... Um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, if you... <laughs> Uh. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was right. a computer, perhaps. We can. I'll do one more. Was it a um, there's one more I know of that uh, we can do. No longer recall. I think we pretty much exhausted all the all the content that uh, uh, we Stanley have here. Stanley came so. to a set of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. We're gonna go to the space perhaps ending. He wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This we have to we have to not bring the bucket with us. Actually, Stanley took the one other one I want to do actually. Left. What was the sound effect of the restart? It was just some loud, loud alarm to indicate that he's Stanley not the one who restarted. So it. There's one other one I actually want to try here. Five years ago. So, this has a completely different indi indi uh, implication when you have the bucket with you, but I never actually did this without the bucket, so Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far oh, this off is, the beaten this is, path this is this is different that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording? It was all just in Stanley's head. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. 
How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. Ah, now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. <laughs> well. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right, I'll try to do the actual one. Yeah, I remembered that when I came in there, so that was actually when different Stanley now. came to a set of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I'm not going to bother with, like, the uh, the wife ending and stuff, because that one's kind of boring. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone what? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you. I want to build buckets past this beautiful. point. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stop. I unplugged the phone at the and beginning. I think, well, I think I have a solution. I've already done that here. one. Let me show you. I just uh, I wanted to see if this was uh, updated at all. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm. Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? I got rid if of it. If we just stay right here, right in this moment, with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> no, wait. Where are you going? All right, so it hasn't really changed at all. So, not not for that. Oh no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley. No! <laughs> Oh, no, 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 what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Stanley, <laughs> let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? Yes, perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking <laughs> I'm about. I'm actually walking slower now. I know you'll see, you'll see that we can't be happy if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? No, perhaps not. I'm walking so slow. It's so weird because I had no idea that they decided to port it. It was a odd decision. My god, is this really how much you dislike my game? But you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Yes. Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. And jump. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? 
I'm going back. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think we've pretty much exhausted everything possible could it mean? right now, except Stanley this goes in another go direction. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So much was this? Let me let me have a look here. One sec. Uh, where's the store page for this game? Uh, I don't remember what it was. Oh yeah, it's on the front page too of this thing. That's that's interesting that they ported it. Um, so it was it says twenty nine ninety nine, but I think I got it a little bit cheaper just because I own the other one. I, th I I forgot exactly what I what I what I paid for it. So it was like thirty. Wonder what you would have said if you went back to the dark room a second time. Which dark room? I'm trying to remember which one that is. Oh yeah, he he kind of says something different with that. It's obviously a little bit different with it, but yeah. They go, they go remastered, reconstructed. Dude, that that pink room again. It, it was actually in like the the pictures of it, and I don't remember the pink <laughs> pink room at all. Uh, but yeah, so I don't. Uh, is it worth uh twenty nine? Probably, probably not. But I, I don't think I paid for that for twenty nine. How much did I actually pay for it? One sec. I'm gonna open up my thing because I was like, yeah, because like if you've never played it before, it's kind of worth it. It's like at most like. I don't know. I, I've kind of played it for five and a half hours, basically, so. Um, um, so it's like, but, you know, it's I, I like the meta jokes and things like that, so. Yeah, so for me, it was like, um, so I paid 22, and that's like Canadian, so. So it was like, it was like 10 bucks off, that's what it was for me. I think it was when you go to a thing. Pink Room was bun funny, funny. You, remember, you, you forget the best parts. I guess I do. But, uh, no, it was, uh, it, like I said, I I would say probably worth it. Um, there's probably not enough to justify maybe thirty dollars, but I, I did like twenty. But I still like it. I, I still think it was good. Also, the reviews are overwhelmingly over, overwhelmingly positive. So, so I guess so. Yeah, I I do I did enjoy uh, the 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 new jokes and stuff. It's all good. <laughs> Changing your room type appear on. Stanley Parable Deluxe Ultra Deluxe. Also, the narrator is really annoying. Should have a skip button. That's what some guy said on the recently posted. But no, it, was, it. I think it was. I think it was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things that. Uh, I, I think. I think it probably needed maybe a little bit more content, but maybe not. Maybe it was. Maybe it was enough. I, I still. I, I enjoyed it the first time I played through it when I played it in 2013, and seeing the new stuff here was still really good. So that's all. So probably too much, but like like I said, I I don't know why they ported it to another engine. That that part was kind of weird to me because I'm just like, what was wrong with it the the first one? I don't even know. And how it worked there before. So that's what I mean. I even have their own like Discord and stuff like that, and and QR codes. So as I said, when I saw it at the end there, when it was like. Uh, uh, Unity, I was like, uh, I'm like, oh, it's like a joke or something, but it actually wasn't. It actually is Unity. When I looked at the game files, it was. Maybe to sell it on Epic? Can they not sell Source games on there? I'm, I'm pretty sure you can sell Source games on Epic. I don't, I don't think that matters. Is it like a reason they can port consoles? Do they feel the engine wasn't new enough? I don't even know. So, is this even on Epic? Um, the original one is actually. So I mean, I when I was looking up how to enable the the dev console, the uh, instructions were both for Epic Game Store and for uh, Steam, but neither of the things works. So I can't enable it. So go on Discord and ask them. Nah, that's okay. At any rate, no, it's it's fine. There was uh nothing else that I think I really feel I need to cover with it. So so we're gonna go for the uh, the ten year achievement. So, I'll see. You, I'll see you back. I'll play this again in twenty thirty two. So, ask them to join your Discord instead. No, they don't want to join my Discord. Nobody wants to join my Discord. But yeah, no, it was it was, it was fun. It was an enjoyable experience, all all the same. So, it's just like uh, it's it is one of those games you just uh, you play once. It's so it's a one and done kind of game. So, um, there's only so many paths you can kind of go down to. So, 
at least one good game in 2032. No, they're gonna come out with a good DSX game then, I tell you that right now. So. I, I, I do kind of like some of the, the meta jokes and stuff like that, but still, once again, you know, one and done kind of game, so. See, there you go, created with Unity. When I saw that, I was like wondering what the, what the hell that even meant. But yeah, no, they they forsaken Valve, apparently. I don't even think uh, Source was that old, but I guess they decided to make that decision like a couple of years ago. So, I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, don't have anything else to do with that, so... That being said, I'm okay with uh, ending off here, so... Well, thanks guys for tuning in.